Hello. In this video, we're going to go through and do some leveling computations. Okay. These are the types of ca calculations that are common when you go out in the field, you, you have a level with a Philadelphia rod, and you do a loop, okay? Or kind of like a kind of like a route survey. So the scenario that we have here is that we're going to start at a benchmark. This benchmark has a known elevation of 100 feet. That's just an assumed elevation. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our tripod. So the first spot that we set up is, between, is right here. Okay, this little symbol right here is a tripod symbol. And it's somewhere between the original point, our benchmark, and the first turning point, or turning point one. Okay? So I set up my tripod here. Okay? I look backwards, and I'm getting a reading of 5.5. Okay? So my back sight to start off with is a 5.5. Then I rotate the level, move the Philadelphia rod over here, and I do a foresight of 7.2. Once I've completed those two measurements, okay, I keep my real I fill my Philadelphia rod at the turning point. I move my tripod over here, somewhere between turning point one and two. Once I have it leveled, I shoot back and do a back sight and get 8.3. I do a foresight of 9.6 to that turning point. Keep my rod there. The tripod moves with the level somewhere between turning point two and the benchmark. We set up, once it's level, we do a back sight, get 4.1, and we do a foresight to close this loop with a 1.3. That's the scenario that we're looking at. It's a very common scenario for a leveling exercise. Okay? Now, the basis of the calculations are such. So if we, this is our ground and elevation here. So if we're starting out at some point with an elevation one, okay, we set up our tripod, we have our level, we do a back sight, okay. If we take this original elevation and we add our back sight, we have the height of instrument. So the survey direction, what we're talking about for this example, is the survey is moving in this direction. It's a left to right type of scenario, okay? So we know the elevation at point one, we have this back sight. When we add that elevation at point one to our back sight, that gives us the height of instrument HI. Okay, this is just an imaginary horizontal line that's going through our level, okay? If we subtract then our foresight, that would give us the new elevation. So that's the calculation that's shown here. The elevation of point two would be the difference between our height of instrument and the foresight. So this is the basis of the calculation. There really are only two calculations in a leveling exercise. Okay. Now for simplicity, we set up this in a tab tabular form, okay, where I have my stations, I have my backside column, which I call my plus column because I'll be adding those readings. I have my height of instrument column, my foresight, and my elevation. Okay. Now we're going to start, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to assume at the benchmark there's an elevation of 100 feet. So 100 feet. Okay, that's just an assumed elevation. All right. When we set up our tripod, we look backwards, right? So we do a backside, and we saw a reading of 5.5. Now notice I skip a row between each one of these, okay? And I do that on purpose because I want to have a spot where I'm going to write my height of instrument. So, according to the calculation, my height of instrument is going to be the elevation plus the back sight, okay? So I'm literally going to get, take this value plus this value, and I get 105.50 for my height of instrument, okay? Now that I know this elevation is 105.5, I'm going to subtract out my foresight to get the new elevation. My foresight for this setup here was 7.2. Okay, so I got 7.2 feet. Okay, so turning point one, my foresight was 7.2. So if I take out 105.5 and I subtract 7.2, we are going to get 98.30. That's the elevation at turning point one. So essentially we had a decrease of 1.7 feet. Great. That's our turning point, the rod stays put. We now take our tripod, we move it over here, 
we did a backside of 8.3. So when I take my elevation of 98.3, I add 8.3, I'm going to get a new height of instrument of 106.60. Okay. So my height of instrument right here is 106.60. I do a foresight of 9.6. The turning point two. So my foresight is 9.6. Okay. So if I subtract 1066 and I subtract 9.6, I'm going to get an elevation of exactly 97. So at elevation at turning point two is 97. It's a turning point the Philadelphia rod stays put. We pick up our tripod, move it somewhere between that turning point and the benchmark. Okay, once it's level, we do a backside of 4.1. Okay, I'm going to take 97 and I add 4.1. I get a new height of instrument of 101.10. And then to close the survey, I like to close the loop, I do a foresight and I get 1.3. So right here, I have a reading of 1.30. Okay. When I subtract 1.30 from 101.10, I get 99.80. Okay. So. What this means is when we've gone through this whole loop and we've done the leveling, okay, we have an error or a misclosure, and that's the difference between the original elevation, which was 100 feet, and the elevation that we get once we completed the survey of 99.8. So we're, low, we're about 0.2 feet low. So we have a misclosure of 0.2 feet. Okay. Not bad, not necessarily great, one thing we don't know about this is the distances that are involved. If this was several miles, that would be really good. If this was just a hundred, a couple hundred feet, that wouldn't be so great. Okay. So one thing we're going to do real quickly is we're going to check our calculations by doing a page check. That involves summing up the backside and the foresight columns. Okay. So if I have five five and eighteen three, that's thirteen point eight, right? Plus four one is seventeen point nine. Okay, so I've got 17.9 for my sum of the backside. Now I'm going to sum up the foresights. So here I have 16, I'm sorry, 72 plus 96 is 16.8 plus 1.3 is 17.8, Or I'm sorry, 18.1, my bad. Yep, 18.1. Okay. So for the page check, what we're going to do is we look at our initial elevation, which was the 100. We add in the sum of our back, back sides, which was 17.9. We subtract out the sum of our four sides, which is 18.10. Okay, and we add that up, we get 900. I'm sorry, 900. 99.80, okay, which is good because the value that we're getting on our paycheck matches our final elevation. Now, a really important distinction here, okay, what the paycheck checks is the accuracy of your calculations. It's making sure that you didn't add up any of the back sites or subtracting the four sites incorrectly, okay? It does not mean the survey is accurate. It just means that the calculations are accurate. Okay, the survey itself could be could be junk. You know, if I went out here and surveyed this and I didn't have my glasses on, or contacts, or I wasn't properly leveling the instrument, or I was misreading the Philadelphia rod, all these numbers could be worthless. And so the accuracy of the survey may not be that great. Okay. The page check itself is just verifying that the calculations are correct. And in this case, they are correct. So to kind of recap, 
We talked about the calculations involved in terms of, of the leveling process. We talked about the leveling process, the calculations involved. We set everything up in the table. We performed a page check. And we saw that in our particular case, we had an error or misclosure of 0.2 feet because we started off at an elevation of 100 and we closed at an elevation of 99.8. And that concludes this video on leveling competition.